After what some might describe as a middling introductory level, the Arbiter's side of Halo 2's campaign begins to pick up pace rapidly as the Flood make their terrifying return to the series during the Oracle. In addition to dealing with that particular parasitic nightmare, there's also the small matter of the heretics out for your blood too, and it's a combination which makes for an experience that is rather uneven but also significantly more interesting than that which precedes it. Usually, I'd begin with a quick roundup of Halo 2's story, but seeing as my last video did similar and covered previous mission The Arbiter in detail, click the card on screen now to have a butcher's, I think on this occasion we can skip it. The Oracle opens with just two lines being spoken. As brief an introduction as it is, it should give you a pretty good idea of what's to come. What is it? That stench. I've smelled it before. Compared to the masterful way Bungie slowly built tension during the early stages of 343 Guilty Spark, the Flood's first appearance during Halo Combat Evolved, this second time around they waste little time. There are some Flood-like creatures in a containment unit, their biomatter covers the first room and beyond, and you get to watch from above as a group of heretics are overrun in a matter of seconds. There's Speedy, and then there's perhaps Too Eager, and I'm not sure Bungie treads the line between the two altogether successfully. Remember, during the Arbiter, strangely there was no mention of the Flood whatsoever, and then within one or two minutes of the Oracle beginning you suddenly find yourself surrounded by them. The obvious indicators of their presence I like, however with no proper explanation behind events offered up in-game, story-wise their arrival out of the blue may well leave you asking the questions, okay but how and why? Speaking of comparisons to 343 Guilty Spark, you might recall this dialogue immediately before Keyes and his marines find themselves knee-deep in space zombies. You got a bad feeling about this. Boy, you always got a bad feeling about Captain something. Stark. The Oracle has its own grunt-focused spin on it, moments prior to the Arbiter and co also being ambushed by the Flood. Me a bad feeling about this. You always have bad feelings. The heretics leader then appears in front of the Arbiter and team, after which all hell breaks loose. Bungie has set this encounter up very deliberately. In Combat Evolved, Flood would sometimes reanimate themselves, whereas in 2, an infection form enters the deceased's body to achieve the same effect. It's a great idea, as it makes infection forms a more active threat, as opposed to an annoyance that can be ignored entirely or dealt with at the end of an encounter. The room is full of bodies, and infection forms soon arrive to show off their newfound ability, giving you as clear a visual indication of what's changed as you could possibly ask for. You understand straight away that killing them before they can enter a body, or even while they're doing so, will make your life ten times easier, rather than it being a mechanic you might only half notice during one of the Oracle's various encounters. Game design aside, it's an homage to 343 Guilty Spark that does its job admirably, with the reveal of the Flood's new ability to resurrect troops used well to add an unsettling twist. At the same time, hinting at the Flood's presence during the Arbiter, or spending a teensy bit more time explaining the reason for them showing up, would go a long way towards making them feel like less of a random inclusion. From the somewhat sublime, we transition to the relatively ridiculous. I always do my very best not to use overly bombastic language during my videos, but this lift ride is completely deserving of it. It is impressively awful, it is staggeringly boring, it is one of the worst sequences the Halo series has to offer, and yes, that includes those featured in 343 Industries efforts. Do you know how long it lasts? I do, because I've timed it, it lasts five whole minutes, and for much of that time you're not going to be doing anything. While Flood and Sentinels do arrive on the scene every now and then to make events a tad more interesting, you'll mostly just be standing around, wondering when you'll finally be able to do anything other than, well, stand around. Such are the lengths of the gaps between combat, I legitimately think I could have written this entire diatribe during them without ever really breaking a sweat. 
it is the worst slow moving platform section featured in Halo 2 and Halo 2 is a game obsessed with throwing mind numbingly tedious slow moving platform sections at you so that's really saying something. The Oracle would have been a long mission even without it and I honestly have no idea how the folks at Bungie managed to sit down, play through it likely multiple times and decide to leave this extraordinarily dull momentum killing segment exactly as it is. In case the earlier set piece didn't make it abundantly clear, after the elevator ride you're again reminded that bodies littering environments now pose a real and genuine threat. We should have brought weapons to burn these bodies. Every one is a vessel for the front. It's here, from the Oracle's middle portion onwards, that you get to the meat of its gameplay. When I ranked Halo 2's missions from worst to best, I placed the Arbiter above the Oracle, and nowadays I think I was incorrect in doing so. The Oracle does have some rougher sections, for example the aforementioned elevator sequence or the pointless Banshee excursion I'll touch on in a bit, but its encounters are more varied and there's a lot more happening in general. The fight against the heretics and Flood in this multi-tiered room, the battle around the outside of the facility after receiving backup, travelling up and down the ramps in this central area while Flood and Sentinels harass you. These three sections alone offer more encounter diversity than the majority of the Arbiter, which often felt like the same few rooms and corridors repeated ad infinitum. All the while, the level's many cinematics help its story unfold at pace, especially as you near the resolution of this particular part of the story. The Oracle is much like many of Halo 2's multi-part missions, receiving far more attention story-wise than that which precedes it. That busyness is a double-edged sword though, and there remains the lingering question of whether the Flood were actually needed at all. Yes, they sometimes make encounters more interesting, but as mentioned earlier, the narrative justification for them being present is flimsy at best. Whenever I think about this part of the story, the Arbiter and the Heretics are what I remember, with an obligatory, oh yeah, and the Flood were there, bolted on at the end. The Arbiter's struggle against the Heretics is an engaging enough story alone, and I don't think it needed to be diluted by an arbitrary Flood appearance, especially one so poorly explained which ultimately dilutes the initial premise. Also, I highly recommend watching the two terminals which can be found across the Arbiter and the Oracle if you haven't already, as they do a brilliant job of further fleshing out the heretic's story. It's easy to simply view them as an antagonist faction included to give the Arbiter a worthy enough adversary, but they're actually quite a bit more intriguing than that. What is arguably the best part of the Oracle comes as the Arbiter's team formulates a plan to bring down the facility to force the heretic's leader out into the open. Stinking floodbait boxed himself in tight. We'll never break through this then we shall force him out. How? The cable. I'm going to cut it. Cutting the cables themselves isn't the trickiest of set pieces, nor is it the most glamorous. All you really have to do is move between the three you have to destroy in quick succession while doing enough to keep any pesky enemies at bay. The effect your actions have on the environment is what adds extra spice to proceedings. The ground beneath your feet begins to shake, the sound of rushing wind overpowers all else, and through the huge windows of sorts you can see the facility begin to freefall. It's now time to finish the job you first came here for, but just as you begin to think the plan has worked and the heretic leader has nowhere else to run, he hops in a banshee and escapes by the skin of his teeth. don't really understand what the point of this chase sequence is, given you can fly in the direction of the waypoint marker and be done with it almost instantly without needing to engage in aerial combat at all. You need not acknowledge the presence of the enemy banshees which appear in any way, shape or form, although destroying them and watching their pilots and wreckage disappear upwards due to the facility's rapid descent is a striking effect to witness. Nevertheless, it's always stuck out to me as one of Halo 2's stranger moments. 
Whether you choose to engage your enemies or not, you'll quickly reach your destination where another short cinematic plays out. Like the conversation between the grunts towards the beginning of the mission, you've also got to think that the Arbiter clambering to safety after a Banshee crash is a callback to the opening of Halo Combat Evolves The More, which is framed very similarly. Your final few encounters are the most hectic, with heretics, flood and sentinels all present in abundance. There are further reminders of how dire a situation you're in too. Again, you're given plenty of chances to catch sight of the structure's fall, but now you also have to dodge explosions as everything around you really begins to crumble. It's actually pretty rare to see such monumental changes within Halo's environments due to your actions, and it's most welcome here. Like earlier, there's also a good mix of multi-faction combat during these late stages, and there's one part in particular which always stands out to me. There are several dark, narrow tunnels you have to make your way through a couple of times, which are only occasionally partially illuminated by flashing lights and explosions. I've said once or twice before that the concept of combat in darkness is something I'd have liked to have seen the series play with more frequently, and these corridors are a great example as to why. Combined with the Flood and the general mayhem, they're one of the most atmospheric parts of the Oracle. They feel truly chaotic with the sensory overload of the flashing lights, explosions and constant interruptions by your enemies, and it makes for a frantic, fast-paced end to the level. With the facility truly on its last legs, the Arbiter finally comes face to face with the Heretic's leader. The Oracle. Hello, I am 343 Guilty Spark. I am the monitor of Installation 04. Ask the Oracle about Halo how they would sacrifice us all for nothing. More questions? Splendid. I would be happy to assist you. Halo's boss fights have never really been my cup of tea, as I often find their difficulty to be all over the place, and in a way, that makes this particular bust-up the quintessential Halo boss battle. If you're playing on lower difficulties, it's an encounter which is uninteresting at best and trivial at worst, especially if you're equipped with an energy sword, something not outside the realms of possibility given just how many opportunities there are to get your hands on one. It's entirely possible it will all be over before or it's really even started. If you're playing on Legendary, or possibly even on Heroic, it can feel like a deeply unfair engagement. With the Heretic Leader being supported by two Hollow Drones, you will often be shredded to tiny pieces quicker than you can say, crikey, this is a bit much, and you'll likely spend much of the fight cowering in a corner waiting for the right moment to take a few pot shots. There is a real sense of satisfaction from vanquishing him, but everything leading up to that can be quite the ordeal. Once the heretic leader has popped his clogs, the Arbiter and Guilty Spark begin a conversation which probably would have proven quite enlightening if not for Tartarus's interference ushering in the end of the Oracle. I had no choice, Holy Oracle. This heretic imperiled the Great Journey. Oracle? Great Journey? Why do you meddlers insist on using such inaccurate versions? <laughs> that is the Oracle. So it is. Come, we are leaving this system. The Oracle is by no means one of the all-time classic Halo experiences, but its middle portion is fast-paced and action-packed, and it has an engaging story to match. Unfortunately, it's let down by both its early and latter stages. The Flood's introduction towards its beginning feels rushed, and their presence is never really justified, and the elevator ride which follows is spectacularly terrible, while at the end of the level, a pointless Banshee sequence, if you can really even call it a sequence, and a boss fight which can either be incredibly frustrating or surprisingly inconsequential combined to create an underwhelming ending. It's definitely not a mission I'm ever chomping at the bit to replay, which is actually a bit of a shame, as when it comes to its story in particular, I do think the Oracle has all the right ingredients. Thanks for watching the video, boys, girls and Spartans. If you had a floodtacular time, then do think about liking, subscribing and sharing your thoughts. And all's well, we'll hang out again soon.